Christ is risen. Alleluia. Welcome to our worship for Easter Sunday. In Matthew's Gospel, the death and resurrection of Jesus is filled with all the portents of the coming of the day of the Lord. The earth is covered in darkness. The curtain in the temple is torn in two, and the earth shakes two distinct times. For Matthew, the resurrection of Jesus is more than simply a spectacular event that happened to Jesus once long ago and something we will hope will happen to us one day in the future. Today, we are celebrating Easter in the midst of a decisive historical event. Not the ultimate decisive event, but a significant one nonetheless. It is easy and natural to be overwhelmed with feelings of doom and dread in the face of the earth-shaking pandemic. For those of us who are followers of the risen Christ, the call, the challenge, the imperative is to watch for, experience, and participate in the ongoing story of the resurrection. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds, our bodies and our spirits for Easter worship. Morning has broken like the first morning. Blackbird has spoken like the first bird. Praise for the praise for the singing. Praise for the morning. Praise for them springing fresh from the word. Sweet the praise new. sweetness of the wet garden sprung in completeness where his feet pass mine is the sunlight mine is the morning born of the After the events of Holy Week, the disciples are devastated. They are in the midst of full-blown grief and despair. Into the heart of that grief came a stunning revelation. Life had overcome death. Love had won out over violence. God's faithfulness would build them up once again. God's love will bind them together. Is this possible in our lives? Today's worship will say, yes, it can. Come and see, live and love. This is the heart of the matter. Christ is risen. Let the people say, Christ is risen indeed.
our scripture passages comes from the prophet Jeremiah. The people of Jeremiah's time were going through trauma. Jeremiah was frustrated with their behavior for many chapters, but ultimately his tone changes and he prophesies God's promise that they will be built back up from the devastation that they have endured. They will again feel joy. They will begin to plan for the future again, planting vineyards on the hills even in the midst of exile and pain. Hear now these words of promise from the prophet Jeremiah. At that time declares the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they will be my people. The Lord proclaims, The people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness, as Israel searched for a place of rest. The Lord appeared to them from a distance. I have loved you with a love that lasts forever, and so with unfailing love I have drawn you to myself. Again I will build you up, and you will be rebuilt, virgin Israel. Again, you will play your tambourines and dance with joy. Again, you will plant vineyards on the hills of Samaria. Farmers will plant and then enjoy the harvest. The time will come when the watchmen shout from the highlands of Ephraim, get ready, we're going up to Zion to the Lord our God. Please join with me in an attitude of prayer. God of new dawns, new awakenings, new life. We hear your voice this morning saying, I have loved you, my people, with an everlasting love. With unfailing love, I have drawn you to myself. On this Easter day, you tell us we will be rebuilt and made new. In gratitude, we hear you, living God, and we believe you. And so we will celebrate the gift of new life in Christ, even in the midst of fear. You give us eyes to see through tears, songs to sing with throats tight with emotion. We know you help the weary rise up out of the ashes. Give us the courage to be your light and hope in this world today. We continue in prayer wherever and whenever we are with the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Easter is different this year. Let's get that right out there at the very beginning. Easter is different. There will be no putting on a brand new spring dress or a fancy Easter bonnet. No brand new suit and tie to wear to church that day. No big family gathering over an Easter ham or for Easter brunch. And we will not be gathering in our sanctuaries with shouts of hosannas and triumphant trumpet fanfares and rejoicing in the beautiful bright colors and aromas of those hopeful spring flowers. This year, we kind of have an Easter in limbo. This year we get to say, Christ is risen, but. This year, instead of putting an exclamation point after our alleluias, we follow them with a question mark and shout, alleluia? But maybe this is a good thing. Because you see, I think, for far too many, many decades now, the church has done all our celebrating of Easter by limiting it to kind of a happily ever after ending to the season of Lent. We've celebrated it sort of like in a Star Wars movie, when that missile hits just the right spot in the last moment and obliterates the Death Star. Or kind of like in an Avengers film, 
when Captain America or Captain Marvel or Iron Man summon their last ounce of strength to defeat that invading army of aliens or summons their last ounce of strength to defeat the enemy with just that simple snap of the fingers. We limit Easter to just that type of happy ending. Just when it looks like the evil empire, Rome, is about to win the day, just when it seems that horrible, inevitable enemy, death, is not going to be defeated, in comes an angel. And we have resurrection. Easter, Christ is risen, alleluia. Now don't get me wrong. Easter is indeed and remains the all-important promise of God that death never has the final say. Easter is always the reason we can joyfully sing, Where, O death, is thy victory? Where, O death, is thy sting? But, just like in a Star Wars movie, where there's always another sequel or prequel. Just like in an Avengers film, where you gotta stick around through all the credits to see what's gonna come next, so too with Easter. There is a joyful ending, but there's more to the story. We have to stick around through all the credits because there's more to come. Easter is a story to be continued. So on this Easter that is so different, this Easter where we're just not quite so sure whether or not that stone really has been rolled all the way away from the tomb, this Easter, I invite you to listen to Matthew's story of the resurrection and hear it not as a happy ending to Lent, but maybe hear it as a cliffhanger. Let the words to be continued flash across the screens of your imagination. I'll pick up the story where we left off on Friday. After he rolled a large stone at the door of the tomb, Joseph of Arimathea went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting in front of the tomb. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, the crucified one. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings! And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. 
There they will see me. So let's take a minute here and sum up the imperatives we heard in this gospel story. There are two in particular. Go and tell. Go and tell his disciples. Go and tell my brothers. So they went and they ran to tell. Do you see what's happening here? The story of the resurrection doesn't end with the happy ending of the empty tomb. It doesn't end with the even happier ending of an actual encounter with the risen Christ. Almost immediately, before they even really get to hear the entire story from this divine messenger, almost immediately, before this story has a chance to sink in, the women, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, become a part of the story itself. They are called to carry the story forward. Go and tell. They are called to participate in the story of resurrection. Because Resurrection is a continuing story. It is the story that we are called to continue. It is the story in which we are called to participate. Anytime that you have helped stock the shelves at a food pantry or served a meal at a place like Ministry with Community or our church's wide open table, Anytime you've pounded a nail on a mission trip or helped to tutor the unaccompanied minor kids who come to our church for help, you have participated in the resurrection story. If you welcomed with unconditional love the folks who stopped by our table at Kalamazoo Pride, if you ever tried to sing a hymn of praise, even when the alleluias got caught in your throat because of whatever grief you know, if you have ever prayed fervently for a way out of racism and war, or prayed for the end of any type of injustice or violence, you are participating in the resurrection story. Because when you and I do these things and things like them, we are telling the life-stealing forces of hunger and violence and homelessness and loneliness and racism that they don't have the final say in this story. Our God is the conqueror of all things that would bring death. We may not get to go out and do all those things we ordinarily would right now. But that does not mean that the resurrection story has been placed on hold. Any time that you pray for wise leadership in our country or in other countries of the world, any time that you or I pray for equity across races and nations in the care for people who contract this disease, we are participating in the resurrection story. When you take a break from whatever it is that is occupying your time these days, to call, to write a note to, to send a text message to a friend, a neighbor, or a family member who's having a particular struggle with the loneliness or fear and isolation now, you're participating in the resurrection story. When you take yourself outside for a walk on a warm spring day or go out and get your hands digging in the dirt of your garden because your soul feels particularly hollowed out right now, you are participating in the resurrection story because you are telling the life-stealing forces of coronavirus and social distancing and social isolation that they do not 
get the final word in this story. Easter is different this year, but resurrection comes. God's life-giving, life-renewing story surrounds us and continues to call us forward. So go and tell. Let us close with this prayer that we will repeat every week of the Easter season. Please join me. We know Jesus is present among us, even in this very home. We will not let fear be louder than love, but with glad hearts and rejoicing souls, we will sing God's praise, for we are Easter people. Amen. As we close our worship together, let us remember, God is always with you, no matter what you face. No matter what trials or hardships come your way, God is right beside you, raising your very life from death, guiding and directing your path. So acknowledge your fear and your worry knowing that they are as true and as holy as any feeling, including love and hope and joy. So take heart, my friends.
because this is the heart of the matter. Let the people say, Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 